Fred Coe had a meeting with Patty, and Patty said, I want to do a show. I want to write a script about a guy who's ugly and can't find a girl, and it's his problem. You hear this in a discussion today? And Fred would say, Patty, that sounds good. Bring me a script. He got to looking at the signs around the ballroom at the Abbey Hotel, which at night was a Lonely Hearts Club. And one of the signs specifically said, girls, dance with the man who asks you. Remember, men have feelings too. And he became quite intrigued with that. And he came up to me at a break in rehearsal and said, I think I want to write a show about a place like this, about a girl who comes to a place like this. And I sort of gave him the brush and said, uh, fine, Patty, that's a great idea. And at the next break in the rehearsal, he came up to me again. He said, you know, I've changed my mind. I want to write about a man who comes to a place like this. And I said, Patty, that's a hell of an idea. Go do it. He picked up the phone and called Patty at home and said, uh, Pappy, how are you coming with that Lonely Hearts story? At that time, Patty had, had called it uh, Love Story. That was its title. Uh, Patty said, well, I've got the first act written. I'm working on the second act, and I've got the third act blocked in my mind so I know where it's going. Fred said, how soon can I have it? Patty said, well, give me a couple of weeks. Fred said, how about Thursday? Literal story. And Patty said, well, I'll finish up the second act tomorrow. I'll get on the third as quick as I can, and uh, I'll get it to you as soon as I can. So we set forth casting calls, cast Rod Steiger with the first act in hand. He accepted the part on the basis of that. We cast Nancy Marchand with the second act in hand, because that's the only act in which she appeared. Well, there you are again. I'm this weird looking creature. And um, they say, let me play that part, because I was a weird looking creature. I was the dog. I didn't mind, I loved it. We went into rehearsal on Saturday with two acts in hand and the rest of the cast set. We didn't know what the third act was going to wind up being. I believe, and I think Patty believed, that we had the best of all possible worlds. We were fortunate in our casting, in the script for Marty. Rod and Nan were, were just glorious, and the shorter script, and the more overt emotionalism that was present in that script worked best for that small audience seeing a small screen I remember seeing Marty on television on a night when my wife was in the hospital and I was alone in the apartment and we had an old television set and I sat there with a round screen that I could watch. You remember round screens? And I sat there watching this show and I began to cry and I realized he was doing something incredible. And I called him up half an hour after the show was over and I said, you son of a bitch, you just made me break down and cry. Why did you do that? He said, D what do you mean I broke? I said, Patty, you are one hell of a writer. That, that show is fabulous. And he said, did you really like it? He was stunned that I'd call him. I said, Patty, it was beautiful. I knew he'd been writing about himself. I mean, that's everybody knows that Patty was always digging it out of himself. I mean, there were spectacular writers. I think I, I think Patty Chayefsky, just stone cold, saw the future twenty years off twice, and wrote great people saying saying it. It was the first time, first time for a major television show to be done on screen. Harold Hecht wanted a show that would have the emotional impact that the television show did. It would be twice as long. Uh, the original show was about 48 minutes long, filling an hour slot, and uh, this one would be about 90. Uh, he wanted the same impact, but he did not want the audience to perceive this as being just a remake of the television show. Same cast, uh, same director, same scriptwriter, but a slightly longer script. He wanted as much change as possible. Harold, without denying us, kept trying to suggest other people. Out of that came Ernie Borgnine, whom I had worked with many times in Philco before he came out to Hollywood and became famous as Fatso Judson in From Here to Eternity. Patty and I went up by a small plane, which Harold chartered for us. Uh, he had been sent a script, came off the set late in the afternoon, came in sweaty and dirty and with a stubble of beard, and we sat in his little motel room. Patty lay down on the bed, and I read the 
two or three scenes with Ernie. And we got to the part where he says, why don't you put on the blue suit or the gray suit and go down, there's a lot of tomatoes, you know, and that. And I turned to him and I said, Mom, don't you understand? I'm just a, an ugly, ugly man. And I started to cry because I was that much into it, you know. And I turned away and, and I came back for my retort, you know. I said, all right, I'll put on my blue suit. And, but, uh, you know, and I saw him crying. And I looked at Delbert and he was crying. And inwardly I said, God, I've got the part. <laughs> If you ask me to epitomize why early television like that was so important, it was important because he could be writing that and Rod Serling could be doing Requiem for a Heavyweight or, or whatever shows. People were experimenting and trying and looking. Uh, what was the thing about uh, the days of Wine and Roses? We were, we were tackling very important themes. Patty Chayefsky, what a darling man. Patty was the best. He learned better than anybody. Chayefsky, Patty Chayefsky, C-H-A-Y-E-F-S-K-Y. -E